Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message, Narcissists in Hiding. Narcissists in Hiding. With all of the exposure on the Internet as well as off the Internet about narcissists, you know that those who know themselves very well are going to go into hiding. Once you have stated that an individual is very selfish, he or she is manipulative. This person is the type who doesn't mind looking out for self by any means necessary. He or she will not want others to know what you know. So the narcissist is going to go into hiding in various ways. Number one is he or she's not going to come around you like they once did. The individual is not going to call you as much or maybe not at all. You insulted them with your comments about them being selfish, self-absorbed, conceited, and whatever other reference you made. Oh, you think you're better than other people. You are an arrogant, you know what, you prideful, blah, blah, blah. You expose the narcissist in front of everyone or behind closed doors. You may have talked about the narcissist behind his or her back or to his or her face, and they know that you are on to them. So the individual is going to say to his or herself or to others, I don't like her. I don't like him. I don't ever want to see her cross my doorstep. I don't ever want him to show up at a family event. If that one who got a lot of nerve talking about me says this, does that, shows up, I'm going to do. And the violent narcissist just might want to jump on that person physically or verbally assault them because of all of what they know. God will give us much knowledge as we walk with him. He will give us much wisdom as we seek his counsel. He will use us to expose the foolishness, shine the light on the darkness that is within one's soul. He will also give us the words to speak at the opportune time to confront a narcissist or many narcissists. There are those type that some of you all are already aware of because you've had personal experience with these narcissists and have had to let them go because the Lord himself used people, places, and things, including many audio messages on this channel to cut some folks off. Okay. When they are spiritually, physically, mentally hindering you, you've got to be willing to cut them off. It doesn't matter. Once again, titles. I have to emphasize this every time I do an audio message like this. It doesn't matter if it is the mother, the father, the sister, the brother, the cousin, the aunt, the best friend, the family friend, or whoever else. If this person is keeping you from doing the will of the Lord, he or she is always putting his or herself on some kind of throne in your life. Sooner or later, you're going to have to cut that person off because they are keeping you from the closeness in a relationship with the one true God. Now, when I thought about the narcissist, I thought about a variety of them. One particular narcissist was an emotional type, reactive, didn't mind telling you about yourself before you could tell her about herself. An emotional type of narcissist. And her selfishness was, was the type that was about her feelings. Another narcissist was the type that was about his belongings. So he was very guarded about everything, everything that was his. Okay. 
notice selfish about one's feelings and uh, looking out for his uh, for herself uh, when it came to how you talk to her um, the things that she wanted you to do based on her feelings and then the other very selfish when it came to his belongings okay and then another was selfish in both areas including though having a mean streak about her and when you didn't meet any one of her needs she didn't mind acting threatening or if she didn't feel like acting threatening on any given day she would act emotional using tears to draw you in now I discuss these types of narcissists in various books and you can check the description box but I will tell you that when you know the truth about someone and they've showed you over and over again you don't dismiss the quiet voice you don't say that well I shouldn't be judgmental and I shouldn't this that and the other no all of those alarm bells are there to protect you they're there to protect you they're not there to make you feel bad they're not there to make you go out and spend some money on somebody who already has everything or somebody who has guilted you once again into getting them something or to e express your love in a certain way based on the way they feel. Those alarm bells are going to keep you out of trouble, keep you from going down that rabbit hole with that selfish person. Okay. Now, I know for some people, they don't want to believe that there are those selfish folks in the family. They just want to believe that, well, everybody has a bad day every now and again. And yes, we all act a bit selfish and, you know, it is what it is. But when their selfishness is affecting you as well as other family members that are close to you, like children, for instance, who can't defend themselves, You've got to stop with all the sentimental and dismissive type of attitude or nonchalant and just get real with yourself and acknowledge those around you, validate those around you who are going through much with the selfish mother or the selfish father or the selfish in-laws, you see. God will not have us be ensnared, but the enemy will because the enemy wants to ultimately, as I've said in many audio messages, to kill, steal, and destroy. That is his job. Why would God allow such things? Why would God allow these people? Forget the why. We in battle. When a soldier is out there in the battlefield, he's not concerned about why. He's concerned about what? <laughs> the battle. The fight. And winning. <laughs> he's not sitting there thinking about all of the mechanics of why and you know what's the purpose and all of that and God he usually will tell us some things after the fact after the struggle after the fight it, you know everything becomes clear as to why the person you know is behaving in the way that he or she's behaving um, and why now uh, he or she that narcissist is hiding You've had the battle. You've had many battles. Some folks been battling with their narcissistic sisters and brothers and cousins and aunts and uncles for years. And then finally, somebody decides, you know what? I don't want her calling or coming around no more. I know you don't because you don't like to be exposed, narcissist. You don't like anybody coming and telling you the truth, you see. And so you got those individuals who, to be honest with you, it all comes back to salvation, <laughs> It's a spiritual issue for many people who uh, are aware of the spirituality of this thing. OK, these are unsaved people. At the end of the day, a selfish person cannot claim to be walking with the one true God. Mm -mm. I'm going to be so bold to say it because we know that to walk a Jesus walk, to have a Jesus ministry, to be about that Jesus message, you got to have some generosity about yourself. You got to be willing to give of yourself. 
whether it's time, money, energy, all of the above. And narcissists don't give, they take. Okay, some of you all, you got an up close and personal trip with a narcissist that every time you turned around, they were looking for how they could get one more thing out of you. How they could get, you know, the reaction out of you. How they could get money up. How they could get sex. How they could get uh, more of your time. They were coming up with all sorts of little ways to get in your face again. Only to get you all upset and make you wish that they would just go into hiding. And then for some of you all, you ended up pushing them into hiding because the truth was so strong. And you kept praying those prayers, you know, resisting the devil and he will flee. You believed in that. And so that narcissist, you might even miss some of those battles. But at the end of the day, you drove him or her away. And that's a win. Some of you all, there's no sense in crying or being upset any longer. God is bringing you up out of that. He wants you to stop grieving the narcissist who left your life. He wants you to stop grieving the good old days. He wants you to stop being that one that is holding on to the titles. Well, maybe I shouldn't act this way because that, of course, is my mom, my dad, my sister, my brother. Come on now. If your mom and dad, sister, brother, what have you, are not walking righteously, are not acknowledging the one true God, are not walking in obedience, they always got issue with God and God's people, you are not going to be at peace with this person, even if he or she was to come back around or pick up the phone. There's going to always be that place in that relationship that you're going to come back to where you're going to say, I knew I shouldn't have talked to her or started back up to being, you know, at the family functions with those folks or, you know, whatever. You're going to always come back to that with the narcissist who is unsaved because that's ultimately what they are. They're unsaved people. They may talk a good game, but you got to look at the fruits on their tree. And let me tell you a bit about the unsaved. Okay. First and foremost is that Romans 5, 12, wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Okay. Narcissists don't believe that they have sinned. Okay. They may acknowledge a few things that they did back in the day or what have you, but they are not going to stay in that space of confession and repentance and forgiveness and showing some love and all that. Because remember, they're about themselves. Okay. So when they hear things like for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, excuse me. (laughs) No, I haven't. See Romans 3 23. They don't believe. When you say that you're sinning, when you steal, when you lie, when you're out there doing sexually immoral things, you know, when you are uh, being unforgiving and bitter and resentful or jealous, they're like, no, uh, uh-uh, that's her. That's him. That's not me because I am good. I know I'm good. I, I walk with the father. The father knows me and I know him and all this other stuff. And meanwhile, you're saying no. No, that's the furthest thing from the truth in terms of uh, you knowing God, because if you knew God, you wouldn't be trying to put yourself on a throne. You would be at the feet of Jesus Christ. Come on now. Let's just be real and honest with some of these folks. And sometimes, you know, when we get in that state of mind, you know, of pride, prejudice or whatever else that's going on with us. God, if we are really walking with him, trusting in him, and we have a close relationship, he will convict us. He will use people to speak to us. And if we are believers, we humble ourselves, right? We ask for forgiveness or we, you know, say, you know, Lord, um, I've committed this act or I shouldn't have thought this way. Please forgive me. That's what you do as a believer. But the unsaved don't do that. The unsaved narcissistic backsliding, what have you type of individual is not going to acknowledge his or her sin or confess, repent, or do any of it. Mm -mm. Uh, Matter of fact, they're going to look for all sorts of excuses not to do what God, what God's word says. Okay. And they will even pull other scripture out to um, battle up against what they should do. Okay, whatever that might be that they're convicted on or that you've exposed them on. And once again, if you speak too much truth, they're going to go into hiding. 
They're going to hide behind their lies. They're going to hide behind the cover-ups. They're going to hide behind the secrets. They're going to hide behind people who are better than them. But they, of course, will never say that. But they're going to do some hiding. They're going to hide with a lot of words. Okay? Just, they have a whole game plan when it comes to hiding. Now, here's another scripture to ponder. Romans 1, 18 through 20, for the wrath of God. Notice wrath of God. Now we're going to move into that with these narcissists in hiding because that's the other thing they're doing. They're doing something similar to Adam and Eve in the garden. Okay. They're exposed right on their sin. They know that they, that they shouldn't have sinned. The serpent has showed up talking to Eve. Eve, you know, of course, took the apple and then offered it to her husband. The husband is blaming Eve. Eve is blaming the serpent. And it, either way, everybody had no business doing what they were doing. Right. Okay, so that narcissist in hiding is also hiding from the wrath of God, because if he or she knows anything about God as well as God followers, when you do wrong, when you do wrong to people, doesn't matter, you know, what their ethnicity is, background, social status, whatever, when you do wrong to people. That God has his anointing upon, his protection upon. And I know some people were offended when I pulled out scripture about foreigners and so forth. But not every foreigner is a bad foreigner. Not every foreigner is illegal. You see what I mean? And because I didn't go any further with it or what have you, or didn't give real specific explanation. Some people had a lot of issue, you know, with that part. And then they wanted to go off. And not listen to nothing else that I had to say. Meanwhile, the audio message was uh, dealing with narcissism. But you see how the enemy will take you off into some other place, hide the truth. Okay. Just like he uses a narcissist to go into hiding. He hides the truth. And so then you don't get the rest of the message because you're going off on what you think you heard rather than listening to what God is moving you to think about concerning the subject matter. Right. Okay. So. That narcissist who is illegal, okay, or who is, okay, an adulterer, or who is um, a thief, or a backslider, or unsaved, or what have you, is hiding ultimately from the wrath of God, okay? And so, when the wrath of God, I love this scripture, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against what? All ungodliness, okay, and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, okay? So, let's break it down. The wrath of God is shown, it's displayed, it's amplified, okay? It's right there from heaven. And it's against, doesn't say it supports, it's against all, didn't say a little bit or some, all ungodliness, okay? And unrighteousness. Of who? Men. And men is universal. I mean, it's, it talks about women, okay? You can put that in the group. As well, because God's word is God's word. And whether people want to go along with it or not, doesn't matter. His word is going to reign supreme. And when his word says that it's against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, you best believe that there is a butt whipping coming. Let's just make it plain for that narcissist in hiding. You don't hide when you're in the right, okay? You don't hide when you're righteous. You don't hide when you're godly. You are walking boldly. You're talking boldly. You're happy in the Lord. There's nothing to be concerned about. But that narcissist who got some dirty stuff on the cell phone or some shady things or some things that's causing us or, or might potentially cause some problems, he going to go into hiding. He knows how to put the uh, password up. He knows how to put the fingerprint, uh, <laughs> you know, security measures on because he doesn't want he doesn't want the truth to show up because once the truth shows up about who he really is 
he is not going to want to be around that person who exposed the truth. That's why you get some men who it was okay for a while to date so-and-so until she opened up her mouth and started asking questions. Oh, you don't come around anymore. No. Why? Oh, I'm busy. I got this, that, and the other to do. See, he's hiding <laughs> with his excuses. No, at the end of the day, he didn't like that conversation that came up about what do you think about marriage? What do you think about children? See, he's in his selfish period of life. And I'll tell you that in the past when I was dating, a lot of the selfish men that I come across were those ones who were not ready to commit to anyone because they were focused on what? Self. Building up their uh, business or um, looking for work where they could make the kind of money that they wanted. They were uh, thinking about where they wanted to live. They had their goals in mind. They were looking out once again for self. So if they're looking out for self, very focused on self, they don't have the space to, in their life, to care for a woman or to be there for a woman mentally physically yes yeah, sexually because it don't take long to have a sexual act and then send you on your way always had room for that but a man who is self-centered self-absorbed uh you know just all things selfish you could talk until you're blue in the face about what you want from him but if he is not willing to open up himself to you then he's not going to do that. Now, there is that selfishness that is okay and all right, because it's going to eventually lead um, him toward a future relationship with somebody. Because he is building up his reputation, building up his finances and so forth, as long as he's willing to open up that door one day. But there are some that they'll go on for years and years and years in that self-absorbed, self-centered, selfish type of mindset. And then wonder how come there's consequences to all of their selfish acts as opposed to selfless acts. Okay. Because it's been about self for 20, 30 some odd years and people get tired of getting into uh, or making connections with people who is always about what they want, when they want, how they want. And you think that God doesn't get tired of that? He says, I need you to humble yourself. I need you to come to me. I need you to walk down that aisle and uh, confess sin and repent. I need that from you so that I can build you up so that I can give you the desires of your heart. And then when a man or the woman says, no, I'm good, I'm all right, and I just want everybody to serve me, I want everybody to do for me, people owe me because of all of what I went through, God can't work with that. He can't work with that. That's an unwilling, unrepentant type of individual, a rebellious person most often. And once again, a self-centered individual that's all about self. This is why it's so hard for some of you all to have a connection with some people because you might be that one. When does self get out the way? You got your car. You got your house. You got your money. You got your time. You got all this freedom, the Lord says. You don't have any kids to deal with. Whoop-de-whoop. -whoop. Some of you all don't have any partner to deal with. Whoop-de-whoop. -whoop. And God says, okay, you got all of these things. Now, let me in. Nope. Nope. You're holding on to what you heard, what you researched, what you found out, what somebody else's experience is like, rather than have a one true God experience. I'm talking to some, not all, because most of these people that's listening to this message today are victims of the narcissist or survivors of the narcissist. If you're a victim, that means you're still in it with the narcissist. You're still on that grind. You're still on that struggle bus. <laughs> If you are a survivor, that means you're out of that. You're out of that just drama and you have moved on. But what you don't want to do is get caught up with another narcissist. You see, whether it's an intimate relationship or a familial, a familial uh, relationship or what have you, a family, a family connection. Okay. Uh. 
you just don't want to do it. You don't want to open up those doors again. And sometimes they do it through those holiday events. I've said it in other audio. We got more holidays ahead. Mother's Day, Father's Day, right? Uh, Fourth of July, Labor Day celebrations, <laughs> Halloween, Thanksgiving is a big one, Christmas, oh my, and then New Year's. All those opportunities for the narcissist to say, you can come on over when you're going to see me. Oh, I'll send you the money, you know. And then you find out that <laughs> you're in the presence of some unsaved, unholy, unrighteous people who are hiding, who are hiding. God is walking in the garden and they're hiding, covering up with their lies, their secrets. Jesus, and they want you to take of the apple too. I ate it. It's good. Why don't you come over here and break bread with us? It's all good. Smoke this, drink this. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then in the end, what does the narcissist do? He or she's going to talk about you to puff him or herself up. Yeah, she was over here. She got drunk. Mm hmm. Came over here talking all that. Shoot. I tell you what. Uh -huh, they got a lot of negativity to talk about once they ensnare you. And some folks is going to be led, led like pigs go into slaughter because they don't see the charming manipulative cunning but once again selfish self-righteous type of narcissist at their doorstep because she's so pretty she's so nice she changed she's good people uh don't judge mm -hmm. no nah, she got a long track record of some dead bodies dead relationships lots of losses She's not under the blood of Jesus Christ by no means. When's the last time she spoke anything about Jesus? Is she even on a Jesus ministry, Jesus trip? Is she out there doing anything that's godly or is she all about self? She going to the church because, well, I want people to look at me. She's going to the church because she wants uh, God to bless her. She's going to the church because she wants to make connections for herself. You got some that that's why they're there. They, uh, they're going to the church because they want to listen to the music that makes them feel good. You hear it? You hear it? All that me. Mm hmm. But I thought she changed. I remember hearing somebody say that about some folks. No, <laughs> no. That's why you give some people some time to show themselves. OK, and you believe what you see. In other words, when you see the ugliness in them, believe it. It wasn't just a bad day. When you see the selfishness rise up in them, don't say, well, you know, I mean, we're all selfish. Leave yourself out of it. And that's another thing that gets some people in trouble. They always putting themselves in something. Because it looks a little bit like something they went through or it reminds them of someone or something. <laughs> Lord Jesus, stop doing that. That is not you that's standing before you. So remove your past story, your past experience, your past whatever that you want to place upon the narcissist to make you feel okay and all right about welcoming the ungodly, wicked, unrighteous person into your life again. Just stop and just look at the person for who he or she really is. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness <laughs> but is long suffering to us war not willing that any should perish but that all should come to what repentance you see repentance <sighs> just stay there for a minute that's second peter 3 9 this is why the narcissist ultimately gets away with their ungodly deeds in hiding, but sooner or later going to come back out again and going to be up to no good again. Charming, sweet talking, drawing people near again. OK. God is long suffering. His mercy shows up. His forgiveness shows up. You got some people who they got that kind of mercy, they're long suffering. But at some point, the mercy runs out. 
You can't keep being that one that receives, receives. Are they going to give me? Are they going to glorify me? Are they going to come and talk to me? Are they going to be there for me? Me, me, me. You can't keep being that way until one day the Lord says enough is enough. I'm moving your family out of your life. Selfish man. I'm moving the items away from the home. Selfish woman. I'm done with giving you. All I ask for you to do is, and some of you all had those conversations. All I wanted was this, and you couldn't give me even that. All I wanted was for you to come over and give me a hug, give me a kiss, uh, you know, just shower me with a little something. And all you kept doing was asking more and more and more. You wanted more and more and more. And I got tired. Some folks had nervous breakdowns behind this. Some folks ended up eating themselves into sick, just eating, just eating, eating, eating all sorts of things. Okay. Until they got so sick because they were trying to comfort their troubled soul dealing with a narcissist. Some folks ended up going to jail behind a narcissist. You going to take this rap from me. You going to laugh from me. You going to say that this really happened. They're serving time right now. This is how deep this thing goes with this narcissistic, satanic spirit that is among some folks who are never going to change. I didn't say all. I said some. Because some folks do, at some point, get to that place because they're not heavily influenced by narcissists. They've got some ways, but they're not heavily influenced. And so they are able to heal. But then you got some that it's like they were born that way, you see. And no matter what type of consequence, no matter what shows up, they go into hiding for a while. Nobody hears from them. Nobody sees them. But then they come back out and they got a new face. They got a new front. And there are many faces to the narcissist. And he or she will dress in the costume, so to speak, based on whoever is around them that they can feed off of. Their parasite type of individuals will dress the part based on whatever they can get from that particular audience. And I've seen this sort of thing. I use an example in a past audio where uh, some folks know how to be the Methodist when they want something. And that's in my manipula manipulations of the poor audio. They know how to be a, a church of God and Christ follower. They know how to be a Catholic. They know how to be, um, you know, a Lutheran. They know how to be a Buddhist. Whatever group is willing to give to them, they know how to change their face for that group. But you don't know anything about them, but I know what they got says the narcissist. So that's why we didn't see you for so long. You were over there studying such and such. Uh-huh. Because you wanted this, that, and the other. Yep. You see? And some folks are like, well, as long as you're over there messing around with this one and that one and not bothering me, I don't care. But no, we pray. We pray that they be exposed. Why should that person over there have to go through? I know some of you all are baby mamas and your child's father is off with somebody else, but that father is up to no good with her too. You can pray. You can pray in Jesus' mighty name that that woman be delivered from that narcissistic ex of yours. That's the nicest thing you could do. Luke 5, 32, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Once again, this is a warning for somebody. If you hear yourself in this message and we're talking about you and your narcissistic ways, this is a time for you to repent and get your life where it needs to be according to the will of the Lord instead of feeding off of folk by doing all sorts of selfish types of things. And then going into hiding and coming back to get some more. God is calling you to repentance. Lord Jesus, thank you. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, 
This isn't a message that is about condemning. But this is a message that ultimately brings you back to Jesus Christ. For God sent not the son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Once again, the narcissist, he or she, there's that opportunity to be saved. And you can pray for your narcissist family member, friends, or whoever you believe is a narcissist. You can pray for their salvation. You can pray for their salvation, that they might be saved, that they may come to know Jesus Christ, that they may hear the stories of Jesus and how he treated men and women. Because a lot of times these people, they don't know how to treat folk. Their mamas didn't take time out. Their daddies didn't take time out. They didn't see good examples around them. So you're asking me, says the narcissist, to be more kind, to be more generous, to consider others, to serve others. I don't know how to do that. You need to show me because you see, back in the day, I did this, that, and the other. And right now, I'm on that hustle. You need to tell me, you see. And God will put the words on your mouth to speak to that narcissistic person. God will move on you to act in ways that that narcissist can be able to pick up on. And the next thing you know, they are copying what you're doing. You're treating people kind. They're treating people kind. And that's a compliment. Don't take offense when that narcissist is saying, yes, I want to do what you're doing. Now, now you're not going to manipulate folks, right? You're not going to come up in here and, and start that what's in it for me stuff. No. Okay, I'm going to give you access to these people. But I'm telling you, you better not hurt them. I'm not, I, I promise, okay, because if you do, I pray, the Lord be with you. You see, you got some folks that they, they will, they will give a narcissist an opportunity to do what's right. And if they do what's wrong, there's consequences, there's that wrath of God. And of course they're going to go into hiding. Oh, so you stole. Well, I was, I was trying to help some people, but I couldn't resist and I took this and that. Uh huh. So now you ain't coming back around. Well, uh, I mean, uh, -huh, cause you know that if you come back around, I'm gonna do this, that, and the other. Of course, that narcissist is going to hide because you got some folks that threaten violence behind some things, and you don't want to do that either. Okay, as much as they can anger you, you don't want to be that one that ends up going to jail or six feet deep behind some narcissist that's made you reactionary instead of responsive. Uh, responsive and so you handle things accordingly so what do we ultimately do when we're dealing with all people not just the narcissist believer and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned that's Mark 16, 15, and 16. Don't be angry at me, some of you all. It's what the Bible says. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And those narcissists, a lot of them simply don't believe in the word of the Lord. And this is why their lives exemplify some damnation. That's why they're going through like they're going through because you can't keep rejecting and rejecting and rejecting and thinking you're going to keep getting blessed. <laughs> That's, that's uh, where they're very deceived. I thank you, Lord Jesus, once again, for just moving on the spirits of men and women to show up to this particular audio message. I pray that those individuals who need to be saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, will say the salvation prayer, get to a church, be around the like-minded, be baptized in Jesus' name, and walk according to your will. Reading about Jesus, who did so much, who just provided the most selfless acts in all, in all of history. And that was laying down his life that he could have saved. He could have looked out for himself, but he didn't. He laid down his life for us individuals who simply, simply didn't deserve him. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray that you be with those who are recovering from 
all of what they went through being with a narcissist, growing up in a narcissist family. I pray, Lord, that you just continue to protect their minds, their bodies, their spirits, Lord, from the enemy who uses narcissists and so many others to kill, to steal, to destroy. Put your angels of protection all around us. Keep us from all harm and danger. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Blessings to you. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube Enum Enterprise 7. Subscribe today. And stay clear away from those that the Lord has called you to stay clear away from. It doesn't matter the titles, doesn't matter what they have given you. There's a season for some of you all where you're not going to be around these people. And every time you try to get around them, something bad happens, something crazy, something odd, strange. Take all of that as a sign that it's not time. It's not time. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Focus in on what it is that he wants you to do, not what you think is okay and all right, not what the world says is okay and all right, not what your family members, your friends or co-workers. You are in a season where you need to be focusing on God and not on what others think. Blessings to you.